everybody. Welcome back. Yes, I know it's a little dark in here. I had so much to do today and I'm just getting around to reacting to Chantal. I've been waiting for her to do something worth reacting to and it's just nothing but food videos these days. <laughs> Not my favorite thing. But I knew that she would be upping the amount of food videos considering the fact that she just got Salah a new car. I don't think she bought him the car. I think it's one of those micro leases. But even still, with a micro lease, you're paying, what, $700, $800 a month for the car. So she's obligated to pay that much money to make him happy. So what are we going to get, y'all? We're going to get more of the food videos. And this one is a lot of fun. Burgers, fries, and pepperoni, pizza, mukbang. So I guess you really don't care about the new terms of service, do you, Chantal? Maybe you've had a talk with YouTube. Maybe you just don't care if you break the rules because you're under the impression that they're going to keep you anyway, no matter what you do. But she went from having a backup sandwich that nobody saw to just full on having the sandwich and the pizza at the same time. So she's going to do this video and I'm going to give my thoughts to it. And I hope that you guys sit with me and enjoy the video. So why don't we just get this bad boy started, shall we? All right. Uh, okay. We're going to get past the scamio stuff. Go away, Chantal. <laughs> I want to hear you. No scamio. No, no, no. We're not promoting that here. Nope. Nope. And by the way, if anybody from Chantal's side of the fence comes over here and you try to tell me this is not a B moment, I'm sorry. Yes, it is. Because there's no possible reason why you have to have a pizza and a sandwich and fries at the same time. That's that's a B moment. Sorry, it is. That's two meals in one. You don't need that much food. She can't possibly be that hungry. Uh, but yet, yeah, this is Chantal we're talking about. So yeah, two meals together. Not exactly the healthiest thing, but that's Chantal. But she's happy because she's getting all the food she wants. So let's just sit in and see what she has to say, shall we? Perfect for each other. <laughs> Weirdos. <laughs> Hello, guys. Alaikum. Welcome. Welcome back to another video. Um, before I start this video, I just want to say that I put a link in the description for a website that if you're choosing to boycott um, brands, restaurants and things like that because of the um the occupation of palestine you can type in a company name if you're in doubt in there it's like a search engine it will pop up and tell you if it's on the uh, if it supports israel or not um i know sometimes there's products that may be on that list and we're doing our best that we can if you're interested and you want to know definitely check it out i definitely think you should and we're doesn't care about what products are banned and what are not banned because you gotta no no even when she gets on camera and she's not drinking something or consuming something on camera she's doing it off camera if she wants it she wants it and it doesn't matter if it's banned or not we're trying to do that as much as we can we're trying to eat as local as we can um and so by the way chantal i don't want to hear any more complaining from you about the cost of anything do you understand me? I don't want to hear you complaining about the cost of food anymore. Remember when you were in Thailand and you were complaining about the cost of cherries and you go on and on about this is expensive and that's expensive and this costs too much money. But yet, isn't it strange how you never complain about the cost of takeout when takeout is expensive? I'm sure that the takeout in front of you cost more than say cherries or cheese but let's complain about that and not about this there are people in the world Chantal that are concerned about feeding themselves and feeding their families and they got to be very careful with their money you're over here buying takeout three and four times a day and we know this because of the amount of videos you put out per day and every time you do takeout, whether it's Salah going to get the food for you from a fast food restaurant or you're having it delivered, guaranteed you're paying at least 30, 40 bucks per occasion. 
And if you're doing that multiple times a day, I'm sure your food bill every day has got to be around the neighborhood of $100. So since that's the case, don't you dare come to me and talk to me and complain to me about the cost of cherries and cheese. If you can afford this, you can certainly afford those things. Yeah, this uh, is local food here right now. So Bismillah, this is a lemon mint slush. I have a burger, <clears throat> excuse me, burger meal and a pepperoni pizza. All right, let's dig in. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about, a lot of you have probably heard this, again, rerun. Okay, so this burger has like a whole- And another thing, for someone who's having so much fun in Kuwait, your life is so happy in Kuwait, you're so much more fulfilled, how come we don't hear any happy stories? Why is it all stories from your past? Why is it all reruns? You're in Kuwait. There should be no such thing as reruns because you're in a different location with a different person. You're supposed to be letting go of your past and pushing past it, but yet you keep bringing it back. You keep recycling things from your past. Isn't that strange? And isn't it odd that even with your new life, you have nothing to report in your new life. It's all, I'm in a new location, but let's talk about really old stuff from like years ago. Bunch of veggies on it. Green pepper, tomato, mayo, cheese, beef burger. I'm sorry, that looks disgusting. Like no shade on that restaurant. It doesn't look nice to me. Mmm. Yummy. Lipstick goes on, lipstick comes off. I don't want to get it everywhere. <laughs> so we have three dips with these fries. Spicy mayo, ketchup, and mayo. Mmm, nice fries. This, this meal together is so carb heavy. You've got the fries, carbs. You've got the bun on the burger, also carbs, and you've got the pizza, carbs for days. <laughs> Why do you need that many carbs? You don't do anything. You're not going to burn off all those calories, Chantal. Why do you need so many carbs? Mm. Can't hear you. Mm-mm-mm. When you haven't eaten all day. Let me stop you right there, Chantal. You're lying. And I can tell you're lying. That you haven't eaten all day. That's a lie. Because if you had not eaten all day, which we know is not possible, you have to eat every two hours. If that was the first meal you've had of the day, you would be ravenous. You wouldn't be able to control yourself. You're controlling yourself. You're going a little bit slower, which leads me to believe you've had at least one or two meals before this one. I don't know why you come on camera and tell that lie of, I haven't eaten all day. We know that's not possible. Absolutely not possible. Seriously? So Sorry about that. <laughs> Guy doesn't even know his road rage is being caught on video. Um, so I thought I would tell you about my work history. What work history? Because since I'm a YouTuber, I've gotten a lot of, get a job, you dirt, you freaking lazy bum. You know, the thing is, if Chantal didn't have YouTube, if YouTube completely demonetized her channel, she would be done for. I'm not saying she would be unalive. I'm just saying as far as employment and as far as making money, she would be absolutely done so. 
because who would hire her? She's not hireable. People would search her name on the internet and find all the stuff she's done. Nobody would hire her. But let's just say on a devil's whim, that was not the case. Physically, Chantal, she can't do any job. She could not be on her feet for any length of time. She wouldn't be able to do an office job. She's not very good with people. She doesn't know how to talk to people. She doesn't have the right temperament. She would be absolutely, positively unemployable. That's why it astounds me that YouTube is it for her. It's all she's got. And yet she's not making the most of it. She's not taking care of herself. She's not putting out great content. She's just basically phoning it in with her content and taking her channel when her channel is all that she's got. And if that's gone, the whole house of cards is going to come down around her. So here's the thing. I did have, um, I've been working my whole life since I'm 16. Um, Okay, for those who are not aware, like I know a little bit of the Chantal lore. So she's talked in the past about different jobs that she's had. And she's talked about having one job, I believe, at a psychiatric hospital. She got hired to work the phones. And the whole premise of the phone job was that she was supposed to speak fluent French. And she did not know how to speak fluent French. So she got fired. There was another job at a hospital where she got fired because she was just constantly eating at her desk. She was not showing up to work or showing up extremely late, so they let her go. She doesn't have a very good job history. There's virtually no job that she's been hired at that she wanted to do or she could do well, so they let her go. Hi! Come show yourself more. <clears throat> So yummy. Let's try this pizza. So I thought, yeah, I thought I would just tell you like everywhere I've worked. Why? Up until YouTube. Uh, you know, I'm confused. Y'all help me. How does a mukbang translate to her sitting there talking about her job history? Like, how do you work that in and make it make sense? Because this isn't really a mukbang either. A mukbang is a live stream or a video where you get the sensation of sitting across from the person and having a meal with them. This isn't a mukbang. This is a watch me eat video. This is strictly for the feedy people. Maybe a feedy paid for this meal. You know, because it seems like she's catering more to that subset of people in the last few videos it's really gotten obvious but how do you marry the two subjects the eat with me plus let's talk about my job history even though nobody asked and nobody cares because i do consider youtube a job because yeah well you suck at your job i put time and hours into no you don't i'm sorry i got loud there my apologies. Anybody wearing headphones, I have, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get loud. I'm just getting excited. She considers YouTube her job. Well, I guess you're treating YouTube like all your other jobs. You're not giving the most work or effort towards your job. You're not taking pride in your work. You're doing the least amount and expecting the most amount of money for it. But unlike your other jobs, for some reason, YouTube just won't fire you, even though they really should. And that's my opinion, because you suck. Uh, <laughs> but you do the least, Chantal. Maybe it's a game with you. Maybe it's a game in your mind of how little can I do and how much can I get away with and how much will I get paid for? Is that is that the deal? You're, you're playing a game with YouTube and your audience. Like, how little can I do and my audience will let me get away with it? To making videos, you know. You suck at it. And I get paid and I pay my bills with that or I pay whatever with it, you know. 
maybe you don't exactly pay the your bills with the money you make because if that were the case you wouldn't be like 50 60k in debt mama you wouldn't have a bankruptcy still and that bankruptcy that's one of the main reasons why you won't go back to canada that and the fact that you can't take salah with you if you could you'd be there in a hot minute Mm. So good. When I started making money on YouTube, that's when I considered it a job where I could have enough to pay for things, you know? And I will go on record as saying that I think YouTube and being monetized on YouTube was the worst thing to happen to Chantal. I know she thinks that was the best thing to happen to her, but just think about it. If Chantal had not had a big channel, if she hadn't gotten monetized, sort of making that money, she would probably be two to 300 pounds lighter. She'd be a lot healthier. Uh, she might be in a better place mentally or emotionally. The moment she got on YouTube, she stopped being Chantal. And she devoted herself entirely to being the character, the persona of Fody Beauty. And she just lost herself in translation with it all. You know, and look at her now. Like, here we are five, six years later. And this is what it's come down to. Like her basically eating herself right into the hospital. So let's go back to when I was 16. Why? I was living in a group home because I got kicked out of my home for being a beezer. Okay. So I've read up on you, Chantal. This is what I've read about you that you were a bully to your own sister to the point where the family puts you in a group home. You were so mean and so nasty to your sister. They put you in a group home. You were a wild child and they didn't know what to do with you. Like you've been bad from an early age. I don't blame my mom. It actually taught me a lot of things whenever she kicked me out of the nest. I mean, she still gave me money and she still invited me over for dinner every day. But the group home was an amazing experience for me. I met one of my best friends there. We were roommates. And she had nine inch nail posters. She was obsessed with nine inch nails with Trent Reznor. Oh my gosh. So, you know, I find it funny that she just said that the group home thing was amazing and that it was a good experience for her that, you know, she learned a few lessons, blah, blah, blah. But yet, here we are, y'all. <laughs> We've seen her problematic behavior on YouTube. Does this look or sound like a woman who learned some hard lessons at an early age? And then when they got older, they became well-adjusted, disciplined human beings with morals and values? No. <laughs> so, so what happened? What happened? It, it doesn't sound like you learned very much in your early years. Very thin crust. So anyway, at this group home, they wanted you to be productive. They promoted productivity and youth. And they had the opportunity for a few of us to... I was one of the more behaved people there, actually. My roommate and I...
Okay, so let's do something. Let's think about Chantal, the person, and how she lives her life. She hates hard work. She absolutely hates it. And she hates doing things for other people unless it means she's getting something in return. Then she'll do something for you. You know. So does anybody believe she was at this group home and she willingly went to work? That she worked without a fuss, without any trouble? No, I don't either. I think if she went to work, it's because she had to, not because she wanted to. Um, go to this job. It was like jobs, though. Cornwall, Ontario. This place that places you in a job. And then the place can decide if they want to. Like, I think the place pays pays them like a placement agency for youth. So you were forced to go to work. Okay. So I got placed at New York Fries, like six twenty five an hour or something. I didn't like it because it was so much work for a little pay. A lot of the time I was working on my own. So I was responsible to like clean all the fryers. One time I cleaned all the fryers, which took forever to scrub the back of the fryer. Put everything away. My bad. But if you don't do that early, here's the thing with working in fast food. If you don't do it early... Like maybe start a half an hour until close. At least start. You're going to be staying late and you're not going to get paid for that. Chantal, listen to me. I, when I was young in my 20s, I worked at a buffet restaurant. And let me tell you, it's a pain in the butt. <laughs> I worked the buffet. I was the one responsible or one of the ones responsible for stocking the buffet. And at the end of the night, you got to put everything away, close it out, clean it up, all that. It's a lot. Doing food prep, de dealing with food, food service, it's a lot. So here's where I'm scratching my head about you. So you went through that experience when you were young, right? You worked in fast food. You didn't get much pay for it. You saw the hard work that went into it. I would think that from that experience, that in your later years, when you get on YouTube and you're making the money, you would say to yourself, man, I'm making more than most people and I don't have to work nearly as hard as they do. I am so blessed. But you never took that attitude. You feel entitled. You don't feel any kind of gratitude over it you know because you've been on that side of the fence where you worked in fast food you were on the other side of the takeout window and even now you feel entitled so And yes, I've had those nights in the restaurant where she's right. If you're working in a restaurant or fast food and it's getting close to closing time, you get the, the breaking down started. But there's always the chance that somebody's going to drive up to the window or come in and you have to wait till they're done to finish out. And no, you don't get paid overtime for that. But that's just part of the job. You know, there's certain things you just can't control. It just it comes with the territory. You just got to roll with it. One time, three minutes until close, because you can't close, close. Right. Technically, a customer could come in at, let's say you're closing at, at nine. The mm -hmm. mall closed at nine. 8.59, you have to serve them. Yep. Sure do. A huge family came, ordered like seven puts in. It was crazy. You know, the thing is, 
she's telling this story about a huge a huge family coming in. They all want Putin or Putin. I, I don't know how the people over in Canada can say it. If I'm saying it wrong, if I'm butchering it, I'm sorry. But yeah, I had nights at the restaurant like that. Where like a hundred item buffet, trying to break it down. Here comes a family last minute. But hey, they're hungry. And they got to eat. And it takes you an extra half hour to break everything down. But it is what it is. But here's the irony of that situation with Chantal. She's telling this story about a huge family coming in last minute and waiting on them. But you got to know if it was Chantal coming into the restaurant last minute, she would expect to get served with no complaint. And I could easily see her doing that. Like if she wanted puts in and the restaurant closes at 10 and it's 9.59, you best believe her big butt would be walking in there to get puts in and she wouldn't care. She was keeping everybody held up for an extra half hour. Oh no, she wouldn't get care at all. I cried. <laughs> so then. And yet this one, and I remember this y'all, I remember all those nights when she was with BB. And she'd be running through to the drive through at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. How do you think those people felt, Chantal? Your big butt rolling up in there, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., maybe they're trying to close. Maybe they're trying to break everything down or clean the place up, and you're rolling up for an order. How do you think they felt? 3 a.m., and you're rolling up for some fast food, and you, your butt should have stayed home. Um, I eventually just got fired for like missing too many days. <laughs> that seems to be like a constant with her. Whatever job she starts at, she misses days or she just takes too long for her lunches, for her meals. She always ends up getting fired. I don't think there's a single job that Chantal has had where she had a good rapport with the boss and she left on good terms. It's always bad terms. So then after that, I went and moved in to live with a friend and slept on her couch. The one who was hosting, like, um, a man from China. And he would come down at five in the morning and slurp noodles. Not you putting down somebody for slurping noodles. Look at the way you're eating right now, stuffing your face full of food to the point where your jaw clicks, talking with your mouth open, not you putting somebody down for their table manners. While I'm right there sleeping. Deal with it. So, you know, hold on a second. You know, if... If you're sleeping on somebody's couch, if somebody else is coming in and they're eating their meal, and I don't know the gentleman, I don't know the situation with this gentleman, he might have been an actual roommate. But if you're somebody and you're basically couch hopping, you're sleeping on somebody's couch out of their and being on their good graces, if you have no place to go, you're sleeping on somebody's couch, you have no reason to complain because you're not a tenant. You're just a guest sleeping on the couch. And if you don't like it, get up, get out, go somewhere else. I didn't get much sleep to go to work. <laughs> but anyway, I found a job. My mom's neighbor at the time. The one who looked like and sounded like Ned Flanders. Anyway. He got me a job. He was the manager at a place called <laughs> at a place called Ridgewood. It was a place where you make like cheap furniture. <laughs> I 
And it wasn't an industrial area where the bus didn't go too often. And I was on a late shift. And sometimes I would walk the whole way. It took me an hour. What's up with all these jump cuts, Chantal? Were, were you turning off the camera sometimes because you you were making up the story as you go? And you just had to take a minute to think up more of the story. Is that why there's so many jump cuts here? But it was uh, a very decent pay for my age. I think I was like 17 at this time. Dial-up internet was still a thing. Yeah, I'm old. <laughs> Hi. Don't be camera shy. Anyway. Labor jobs. Oh, my gosh. I swear I'd be doing the same repetitive thing. Taking this board, putting it on the machine press, taking it off. Just for the record, I don't believe anything she's saying right now. She's talking about a job that is labor intensive. I don't believe she did a job like that. First, she was complaining about working at a fast food restaurant. Now she's telling us that she worked at a furniture shop, that the bus did not go to the location, that she had to walk. It was labor intensive. Anybody believe that she did all this? Because I don't. I think she's just trying to make herself sound more hardworking what she actually is. I would look at the clock and it would feel like hours and it was only minutes. Looking, I didn't even smoke that much back then and I started just so I could go on smoke breaks. What? Because and complain about the job with others because that's where everyone went to complain about the job. The smoke area. There was one Karen, she was very popular. Every smoke break. Yeah, I've been here like 13 years. They can't even give me an extra vacation. Can give me my extra week of vacation when I want it. <laughs> but I would be like, yeah, go. Eventually, I they laid me off because I sucked at the job, I think. <laughs> Are y'all seeing a pattern? Are you seeing the pattern that I'm seeing? Okay, so she worked at this fast food restaurant and they let her go. She worked at a furniture place. They let her go. Every job that she gets, she gets fired or they let her go because she sucks. YouTube is probably the only quote unquote job that she's ever had where she's not been laid off or fired. You better be thankful to daddy YouTube, Chantal, because if YouTube wasn't what it is, they would have fired you too. I wasn't fast enough. I'm not a machine. But that place paid... Mm, how much was it? Maybe 12 an hour or something like that? And this whole time I'm attending high school, okay? Oh, you're so hardworking. Oh, I'm going to the school at the, and during the day and I am working hard at night. Chantal, just stop. Stop while you're ahead. You're so grandiose. You're so over the top. That's how we know you lie. Because you try too hard. And the things you say about yourself and your past do not match who you are in the present. You're trying to paint this picture of yourself as being hardworking and dedicated to your work. And I'm so dedicated to my work that I will walk to work. Girl, stop. Just stop. Just tell the real truth. You're lazy. You're unmotivated. You're entitled you don't want to work. You want someone else to go to work and make the money and spend it on you. You can stop with all this. I, I was a hard working young person nonsense.
<laughs> so then there was always layoffs in factories like that. It's still open today. My neighbor, Sally, he passed away. We were having a family barbecue and the cops came over and said, have you seen your neighbor lately? Actually, no, we haven't. They checked, sure enough. <clears throat> he, was, he was deceased in his home. Heart attack. Rest in peace with Ned Flanders. You know, that was a segment that she did not have to bring up. Just out of respect for whoever that person is, she didn't have to bring that up. She could have left that part out of her stories. So then, after that, I went to New York with my family on a trip. And uh, where did I work after that? I had a few odd jobs. You know, I just had a thought. So while it's in my head, I'm going to share it with y'all. I'm getting a sense of nostalgia right now from Chantal. Is there a reason why you're bringing this up, Foodie? Is there a reason why you're talking about your much younger years and the jobs you used to have? Are you missing home? Are you missing Canada? Is there some part of you that wishes that you could just Rewind the clock back to when you were 16. You know, you're trying to live backwards. It, newsflash, you can't do that. You can't rewind the clock. Nobody can. Nobody can rewind the clock of far, father time. I'm sure a lot of us would. But something in your brain is just stuck on those old stories when you were 15, 16 years old and the times you had and the people you knew and the things you did, maybe you keep going back there mentally and emotionally because your life now is so unfulfilling and unhappy. Worked at a day for a day in a bakery. Couldn't figure out how to tie the cake boxes with that rope. So I just thought <laughs> let go. I wasn't sad about it. Then I worked at the seafood restaurant in the kitchen. They were hiring, and I thought I was going to be a waitress. But I swear they looked at me, and they're like, nah, you can work in the kitchen. All of the people they they, they made waitresses were like the hot, thin, blonde, you know. <laughs> Again, there, I got laid off. I could not figure out how to black in snapper. Can you figure out how to do anything? It sounds like any job you take, no matter what the type, you suck at it. One time I dropped the whole bin of chowder everywhere. Oh, God. Oh, what a disaster. <clears throat> Another one was telemarketing is the worst. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I, rem I, rem I remember her telling about the telemarketer job working at this place for telemarketing and i believe one of the stories was she showed up to work one day and she had on inappropriate clothing like too short of a skirt and if i'm not mistaken like no underwear or something but she was dressed inappropriately and the manager who saw her dressed inappropriately because i remember now it was like a short skirt and she was wearing a thong and she told Chantal to go home and change. And years later, Chantal is on her YouTube channel going off about this woman, this manager, even though the woman was just doing her job. Because anybody else dressed like that would have been told the same thing. Selling pantyhose. One minute you're employee of the week, scamming people into buying crap they don't want. One moment, y'all. Have a knock at the door. Please give me a moment. Hey. Hi, I'm doing a react video. Sorry, I need the heater. 
Not that either. That's not good. Yeah. I'm going to try to get this exchanged. All right. Be right there. Sorry about that, y'all. Sorry about that. All right. Sorry. Let's continue. Want like encyclopedias. The next you're laid off because you're not productive enough and selling enough. Yeah, you got to meet your quota. Another one was trying to get people to buy, <clears throat> getting their floor cl carpet clean. I think the whole time I worked there, two weeks, one customer. You'd go in, the woman would rip a page from the phone book, give it to you, call all these numbers. The one customer I was so grateful for because it made me happy. She got like the total package. You can have one room for like blah, blah, blah. Or you can have three rooms for blah, blah, blah. Anyway, she's like, okay. I was like, sorry? She's like, sure. I was like, all three rooms? Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Let me sign you up. <clears throat> anyway, the guy never paid us. He went like bankrupt and scammed us out of being paid or something. I don't know. It, I went to cash my paycheck and it bounced. Only one customer in two weeks. I can see why. Anyway. Man, if I owned that business, I wouldn't hire people to call the phone book. I would just... You know, it's... <laughs> I'm just sitting here laughing in my head. So she's sitting here eating two meals at once. And essentially what she's telling us, folks, is how much she sucks at working. She just sat there and gave us a brief job history of different jobs that she's had, different types of jobs, and how she failed every single one of them. <laughs> Any employer out there, look, if Chantal ever loses her YouTube channel, take a look at this video. You have plenty of reasons why you should not hire this one. She's lazy. She's unmotivated. Uh, like if you hire her within a day or two, she's going to quit or get fired. <laughs> you know, she's not someone that will give it her all. Just do it myself. Anyway, so that was a crappy job. You know, like, you you should retitle this video, Chantal, from Burgers and Fries and Pepperoni Pizza Mukbang to Why I Suck at Everything Except YouTube. And even then, I do suck at YouTube, too. I suck at everything, including YouTube. There, fixed it for you. Then I was focusing on, I went to Katina Vic. Um, I traveled around Canada, volunteer working. I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe she did volunteer work. I believe whatever she did as far as volunteer work, it was, it had to do with something where she just had to do it. Like she was forced to do it. She's lazy. Why would she volunteer to do things for other people? She doesn't have a generous heart. She doesn't have a generous nature. She's not about, she's not about helping her community. Chantal only does things when she has to or when she's going to get some kind of reward out of it. Where I worked for free for 40 hours a week. Very rewarding work. I told you about the women's shelter. We yeah, you know what? <laughs> I believe that was a forced situation. I do. I don't think you did that willingly. Mm -mm. I think you got in trouble somewhere and that was part of the condition you had to work there. You did something, Chantal. What did you do? And I'll take it a step further. I think if indeed you did spend time at a women's shelter, there's a great chance that you talked to or at least you overheard some of the ladies at the women's shelter. And that is how later on in life, when you were seeing Natter, 
you got the inspiration to portray yourself as a battered, abused woman. Maybe you overheard those ladies and the things they said, and you remembered part of them. And you were able to get online on YouTube and say, oh, they hit me so hard. I saw stars and black eyed rage. And he he didn't let me leave the house. I think honestly, like my gut tells me that's where the inspiration for that stuff came from. But because you never have been through that trauma for real, there's a lot of things you did that are red flags that you're a liar. Because unless you've really been through it, you can't give real reactions. So, you know, the moment you said you went to a battered women's shelter, like the, you know, light bulb went off in my head. I think you heard those ladies. I think you listened to their stories and you studied them. And then later on, when you saw Natter and you were trying to get a a control of Natter, you decided to pull from that experience and use that to your advantage to make money on YouTube and pull at the heartstrings of those people on YouTube that have been through similar trauma. And for that, you are absolutely positively vile and disgusting. We also did, that was in Mattawa, Ontario. Um, I don't remember how much the telemarketing jobs paid. I think they were a lot of commission-based maybe $11 an hour. Katima Vic, they gave you 21 bucks a week I spent on cigarettes or booze. Um, and then in Quebec City, I worked at a um, how would I describe that? Maison de la famille. I used to bike uphill every day to Bordalban. Passed by a bunch of cows who look for. Oh my God. I stopped at that part and I just, okay, there's an old joke. Like when you're, you're a bit older, <laughs> you sometimes tell the younger generation, you don't understand how hard it was for me. I had to bike uphill in the snow during a blizzard. <laughs> And I happened to stop at a part where she sounded exactly like that. <laughs> oh, the hardship of being foodie beauty. We'll never know how hard it is, y'all. The hardships that she's endured, our girl. To me, seeing them. And I worked for a weird... Chantal, are you going to use this entire video to talk about your job history? Like, what is the point? What is the point of talking about your job history? Because all you're doing is you're telling us how much you sucked at each and every job. And in almost all of them, you got fired or laid off, but you were never a success. You never came to work on fire, ready to work, giving it your all, working 60, 70 hours a week. None of the jobs that you did, did you ever do so well? You got promoted and you moved up in the company. You barely worked and then you got fired. Like, what is the point in this? You don't know how bad you look saying all these things. Environmentalist guy. I don't mean weird in a bad way, but he was like very eccentric. Anyway, he owned a lot of land and we ha we were hired an environmentalist group to cut down brush from the trees and make brush mats along the side of the, the banks so they don't erode. And I had to wear like those waders and everything. And you know, she hated every single minute of that because that sounds like hard work to me. Very challenging. And again, you would think somebody who's had these life experiences would get on YouTube and say, man, I've worked some really hard jobs, some really laborious jobs that sucked and the pay sucked and it was hard work. And I'm on YouTube now and I don't have to work hard 
and I can make a lot of money. It's so much better now. I am so grateful that I can make a lot of money and I don't have to break my back. But she's not grateful for any of it. She's so entitled. She's actually burnt out on being entitled. Literally burnt out. Like the money is too easy. It's so easy that she's not grateful for one single solitary penny or to anyone that is supporting her channel. I wanted to challenge myself. I could have picked another job. Um, that when I came back home from Katimavik, I finished high school, went to university, dropped out because I was homesick. Um, I was on like a grant and like a low student loan. And then I went worked at Star Tech in Cornwall. Like a customer service for AT&T Wireless and then Singular. For many years. Um, this copter game. Is she going to talk about anything besides her job history? We're moving on. I Listen, I'm not an employer. I'm not sitting in front of Chantal and she's showing me her resume and it's like, okay, what have you done before and what's your job history? So what do I care where else she's worked? After you and be like, your calls are too long and kind. Like, buddy, let's trade jobs. <laughs> this is not an easy job by any means. Anyway. I know I'm starving. I haven't eaten in a million years. Oh, geez. Sure. So I'm, I'm, I'll am i tell you what. I'm in absolute amazement. Miss Mama has eaten. She's about to eat the rest of that pizza. She had an entire sandwich. She had fries. I mean, she's going to polish all of that off. Ow. And she wonders why she's in constant pain. And she wonders why she has no energy. She wonders why she doesn't feel good. I said I wouldn't eat all this, but I don't know. It's very, I'm like not full. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> I know exactly what's wrong with you. It's because of that food problem you have and that bee monster in your head telling you to keep eating. See, that's the problem with bee moments. Is that you could be full, but that that urge, that trigger, that voice in your head tells you to keep going. Even when there's no more room left in your stomach, it'll tell you to keep going. And in my opinion, this is just, I'm not a doctor, okay? In my opinion, I think there's something in Chantal that her idea of full is over full. And anything under overfull is starving. Honestly, I think that's it. I think she is addicted. Again, I'm not diagnosing her. She's addicted to volume and bulk. That if she's overfull, then she perceives that as full and satisfied. If she's not overfull, if she's not so stuffed that she can't put one more bite down her gullet, then she's empty and she's starving. Like her inner cues of satiation are all completely messed up. <laughs> I ended up just like needing to leave because of my mental health. I couldn't take customer service. I couldn't take the daily beatdowns and doing it with a smile. <laughs> Yeah, customer service is a hard job. I've worked in customer service jobs and I like helping people, but let me tell you something. There's too many people out there. They take advantage of the fact that they're on the phone or in front of somebody that it's their job to be nice to you. And if you're a complete twit, they can't tell you you're a twit. And a lot of people take advantage of that. They, they 
They know that you can't speak back, that you're biting your tongue and they'll be as rude and nasty as they want to be knowing you can't give them what they deserve verbally. Yeah. Customer service does suck for that. Your customers can hear you smile. I hope they can hear the middle finger too. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyway, that was rude. So after that, I applied for a, uh, a job with the Red Cross. No, you didn't. I'm doing scheduling. Oh, Star Trek paid $12 an hour. Okay, are we done here? Seriously, like she just talked about her job history. Is there anything else? Plus, a dollar, excuse me, an hour more. Um, I am not an employer. I don't care about her job history. Next. You know, like you scared me. And she would be like, did you book all of uh, Rebecca's clients for today? <laughs> I'm like, I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm not a miracle worker. Anyway. So then... I moved up to Ottawa. And um, I got a job because of my health healthcare background um, at a home health care service. Again. How scary. Chantal in charge of health care. The only reason I left the other job was so I could work at the one in Ottawa. Similar pay, 15 something an hour. Was there for many years, underappreciated, underpaid. So one day during my shift, I looked up other jobs. I kept asking for a raise, like anything, 20 cents. I needed more money. I apply. Oh no, I went to work for another healthcare company in between. Went back to the other one. My boss took me back. She knew I worked hard. Um, that and my friend at the office, like, we like, please take her back. <laughs> we liked working together. When I'm unmotivated and not feeling well, which isn't good, but for Terry for 23 years and we just didn't match. Um, my mental health was deteriorating as well and I couldn't make it for 7 a.m. I hated it. So I came in late a lot, which isn't good, but. I don't have the best work ethic, work ethic, I'm sure you can imagine. Yeah, it kind of sounds like it. Like this whole video, you've been talking about all the many jobs you've had since your like late teens. And you've not excelled at a single one of them. So you're over there self-confessing that you have a really bad work ethic. And yet at the same time, you were complaining about being at a job and they should pay you more money. But why? If you're coming to work, you're coming to work late, you're not doing the work they ask you to do, you're not going above and beyond, why should they give you a raise? Why should they pay you more? 
And on top of that, like you're missing days. <laughs> when I'm unmotivated and not feeling well. well. Well, here you are on YouTube. You are unmotivated and you're never feeling well. You're always tired. And nothing has changed. Even now, you got a bad work ethic. You've got, what, three or four YouTube channels? You can't keep up with all of them. You got a Twitch channel. When is the last time you've done anything on your Twitch channel, Chantal? Your everyday Miriam channel, you haven't put anything on there either. You committed yourself to four or five different channels. And you could barely make content for one. So bad worth work ethic. You want all the money, but you're not willing to put the work in. You're nervous of being like shunned for my work. <laughs> um, but it was unionized and the hospital paid me off. They gave me a really nice sum of money that I could live off for a while while I was looking for another job. And she never looked for another job because she went straight to YouTube after that. I thought I'm going to take a little break, mental break. So I stayed home. And also because I was wrongfully dismissed, I argued that with unemployment. I was also getting unemployment on top of that. <laughs> But they deducted the money that I got from the settlement. Anyway. I was making, I started as a temp position um, in the Schizophrenia Award. And I was making 25 something an hour. Can you imagine? From 50, it's $10 more an hour than where I was before. Then I that's enough. So she ate that whole thing. She ate the whole sandwich, fries, and pizza. I my stomach hurts just thinking about all of it. It's too much. I remember the union calling me in. Okay, you know what? I'm tired of you talking about your job history because. Look, after like the first five minutes, it's very clear. Whatever job you go to, you suck at. You don't want to work. You do your best to get out of work and you expect to get paid. So let's just go to the comments, shall we? Uh, Yuata says, the fact that you can eat so much is astonishing in a bad way. As a skinny person, the fries and sandwich plus the drink would have been enough. That plus a full pizza is gross. I'm surprised her man puts up with this. Oh, not only does he put up with it, he encourages it. Because he's getting something on the back end. You know, he's getting his money. He's getting taken care of. As long as Chantal's around, he doesn't have to work. He's a professional bum. That's why he's cool with it. If Chantal goes to Salah and says, look, uh, if you let me eat 10 pizzas, 10 sandwiches, 5 slushies, two twisty misties and four starbucks drinks and i'll make x amount of dollars today you best believe he's gonna be running around town getting all that stuff if it means he'll get some money in pocket so he, he's on board with it whatever it takes for her to make money because when she makes money he's taken care of and that's really all he's looking for uh Avado Brian says, Foodie, I have a dying question. Why don't you sit on the couch? Well, because, and I'll answer this for Foodie. The reason why she doesn't sit on the couch is because she sits on the floor. By sitting on the floor, she can stretch her legs out. And we can't see how big she's getting. She's disguising how big she's becoming. If she sat on the couch... That means in order for there to be room for her, her, her stomach, she'd have to spread her legs completely apart to make room for the stomach. 
and something would be hanging down. And I'm not being rude saying this. I'm just saying this is what would happen. Like it'd be more painful for her. So she prefers to sit on the floor, you know, to get the right camera angle so that very little is showing. Uh, Adrian says, hi, Chantal. Why do you sit on the floor? Please look into changing that set up. She says, I'll see what I can do. Well, she didn't answer the question while she sits on the floor. She just said, well, I'll see what I can do. Uh, Amy says, have you ever considered that surgery to reduce the stomach? You would be the perfect candidate, hon. Are you talking about the lap band surgery? Chantal could never do the lap band surgery because no surgeon would give her the surgery given the fact that she is a extreme food addict. They're not going to give her the surgery as long as her problem with food is still very much active. You know, in order to get that kind of surgery, you have to jump a bunch of hurdles. You have to show improvement. You got to show that you're on the right path, that you are losing weight, that your problem with food is completely under control, that you are in recovery. They would never give the surgery to Chantal, nor should they. Because let's just say on a whim that she did get the surgery, that by some miracle, she got on and off the table successfully and still alive. Can you just imagine with her ongoing problem with food, if she got the lap band, if she got the reduction for her stomach, that's not going to stop the problem in her head. She's still going to have those urges to eat and go overboard. And if she did that after the surgery, all she's going to do is make herself physically sick. She would vomit over and over again, or perhaps there's a chance that she might burst her staples or cause her stomach to burst. It would be very dangerous for her to have a B moment after surgery like that. So yeah, she can't have the surgery. It wouldn't be safe for her at all. And see. Ah, here's something interesting. Young Reason YT says, you should probably delete your old videos because they have you without a hijab. Well, she's not going to because that caters to the feedy people and they still watch those and she's still making money on those. That's why she hasn't deleted them. And see... Looking, looking, looking. Okay, so that's it for this react. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, please like it, subscribe, and leave a comment. Would love to hear from you. Everybody, please take care. I'm going to go ahead and get myself a little thumbnail and then post this to YouTube and see what else Chantal's been up to. So y'all have a great day, and I will see you on the flip side. Bye-bye.